Cool. All right. Um, okay, so in, in good faith, I just want to ask one thing just right out of the gates. Uh, when you were asking, or sorry, when you made the statement about how anyone could work at Walmart, essentially, right? It doesn't require any yep. kind of specialized training, but at the same time, that's... Well, I said it as, as a greeter, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure. So, sorry, anyone could work as a Walmart greeter. It doesn't require any specialized training. You could do it very, very easily. But at the same time, uh, not everyone can be a CEO, obviously, because it requires, it requires a huge amount of training as well as a whole bunch of investment and time, energy, uh, and then experience on top of that, right? You didn't... Sure. You, you meant that fully understanding kind of like the socioeconomic implications of the fact that like there's a reason certain people could advance or have the education to become that right like there's it's not kind of like a eugenics thing where some people are inalienably inali- able to do that job like they're they're born with that um, yeah, power well, position sure. i would say most people with the right upbringing could i mean i i, I think that there's probably some not everyone can be an einstein right yeah That's no fact, obviously right? Yeah. not that i'm not saying ceo but yeah, yes people. dan is saying yes he agrees with you yes i don't know why don't you dare fucking hassan why would you all you realize when you counter you say well not everyone can be an einstein you're actually like reinforcing no, he's saying if everyone, everyone, if everyone born can, to be walmart greeters no no i'm not saying anyone's born <laughs> okay to be then just agree with this not, point. <laughs> because not everyone can be ceo did you, uh, That's you not think the question. Can? The question is whether or not people that are greeters are literally biologically predispositioned to only ever have the brain. They have Walmart greeter. Brain. Why is my fucking audio cutting out here? It's not cutting out. Oh my god. <laughs> um. Do you play League of Legends for money? Is this like a competitive thing or is it just pleasure? Would you say that people do heroin for pleasure? Yes. Okay, then I do it for pleasure. <laughs> I don't know a lot of people yet who do heroin for money. Well, I just happen to do heroin and I get paid for it somehow, but... That's the dream. His question to you was, do you think that people that are Walmart greeters have special Walmart greeter brains, or is it more due to environmental circumstances that they wind up there rather than some predisposed genetic code that codes them for being Walmart greeters? What was your response? Uh, uh, uh okay sure uh no there's no genetic thing to become a walmart greeter okay cool good job <laughs> yeah and that there, there would be some people obviously who would be more tuned into wanting to do something like that right like i'm not everyone for example i couldn't become a doctor right like i'm never going to be able to do that i'm just like I'm, i've been first to blood so there's some people who wouldn't become uh ceos even if they had the ability right even if they had like the the financial means to do so sure okay yeah, I'm sorry, I just wanted to get that one out of the way right away, because when you initially made that statement about, like, that, and this, when you made that statement about Walmart greeters, that would be reflective, too, of the fact that the majority of CEOs are white males, right? So that the implication is, of course, that it's probably, again, something to do with society. There's societal reasons as to why that is, right? More than that, not just white males. White males that are tall, too. Don't forget that one. It's important. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, there's certainly a disproportionate amount of that uh, being CEOs. I mean, even you could say there's a lot of Jewish CEOs as well, and that's, you know, disproportionate, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so starting from, I guess, the beginning, uh, what's your understanding of the history of the growth of CEO pay and and how it's evolved over time? Well, it's gone up significantly over time. I know that CEOs, uh, I guess, like 50 years ago were paid nothing to the scale of what they were today. Yeah, I, th- I think it was around the range of something like five to one, or maybe it was you know became twelve to one at, the, uh, at a certain point. But then around uh, the nineteen eighties, during uh, Reagan's era, there was a, a, a little bit of deregulation, and then it amped up in the nineteen nineties um, due to a change in the way that taxation happened on stock options. Okay, um, but. At this time, during this exact same period, workers stag- the, the rates of money that workers have been getting has stagnated to about the same. It's remained at about 10%. Sure. Um, so so you're aware of then the gross inequity between the amount that CEOs have been making and the amount that workers have been in the same process. Hold on, this is leading. So the question is, are you saying that there were literally specific regulations that said you had to pay a CEO within a certain percentage of like what a baseline employee made? Or could somebody pose the question, well, of course, CEOs get paid more. Isn't it possible to say that because companies have gotten so much larger because the world has gotten more globalized, for instance? Well, no, I think that would be leading. What what I'm trying to say is that CEOs have been making uh, exorbitantly more money while at the same time workers, uh, the amount of money workers have made has remained the same, despite the fact that, yes, there has been growth, both in the size of these companies and the economy itself. 
Yeah, but my question is, let's say I had 10 companies and all of them had 10 employees and there was one CEO uh, of, uh, or there was a CEO to each of these companies. Sure. Let's say that that CEO made one to 10 of a, of a CEO pay versus an employee pay. Mm -hmm. Now let's say that all 10 of these companies combined into one super company mm -hmm. and now there was a CEO the, of all 10 of these companies that was like one CEO. Mm -hmm. I would expect him to be making more than 10 to one of the base level employee because that company is so much larger. Okay. Like. So my question is, as companies become more globalized, somebody would tell me that Apple or Amazon or Facebook, for instance, is making more than like a CEO of like a small business back in the 1900s or whatever. Uh, well, of course, I would expect that they're, they're responsible for far more employees. Right. So the question wouldn't be like or the, the issue wouldn't be that like somehow they're magically getting paid more. So the company is far bigger. So they have more responsibility. So, of course, they're getting paid more. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's not that wasn't my statement or question. Like I'm, I'm I'm not trying to like I guess lead the witness. Is that what you're implying? I'm I'm just trying to. I'm well, no, I'm just trying to ask why they're getting paid more because you're making it sound like you, you, the the way that you lead it is basically just that like well they were getting paid a responsible amount then mm -hmm. some spooky deregulation happened and now all of a sudden their pay has grown massively. But I feel like that's a causal link that would need to be established. Okay, well, I, I'm not saying it's spooky. First off, but I, at first, I just wanted to establish whether or not you feel that if they're making, um, like, do, do you agree first, Dan, with the fact that employees are still making 10 percent, like the average worker is making that amount? Uh, I mean, I haven't looked at the data. Stephen can probably say, as I know he's looked at the data quite a bit. If that's the case, I I don't think that employees have matched CEO pay oh. growth. No, mm -hmm. I probably concede that. Sure. Okay. I don't know if it's 10 percent though. I have no idea. Okay, but it's if if it's going to be in that range, right? Like it's going it's going to be basically CEO pay has increased. Uh, it's it's a it's I think it's a three hundred one or three hundred forty seven to one right now. The CEO to worker pay ratio currently. Okay, um, is that, that must be averaged across all sectors, of course. Yeah, and all businesses. Like I would expect the Amazon CEO probably makes far more than the line level worker versus like the CEO of just like a, a 50 employee business. You're talking about like a select level of very elite CEOs that like the average CEO, of like a tech startup in San Francisco probably doesn't make 350 times as much as like a base level employee. No, of course not. I mean, we'd probably be looking at what the S&P um, 500 for this. I'm gonna, sure, like, possibly. Sure. Like I really don't want to do, I know you always blame lefties of doing fields over reels. So like I want to pull up actual like statistics and studies for you on everything here. No, I just want to make sure that we're clear that when we're talking about the evils of CEOs, we're not talking about like every single company in America. We're generally talking about a select few, probably publicly traded, like massive companies. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, we'd, we'd, we'd be talking about the, okay, well, let's look at the top 150 companies, right? That's probably the best way to start. Um, I just want to get a little bit to the history of this. So stock options and restricted stock grants uh, have become by far the largest portion of CEO pay. Time Warner Chief Executive Jeff Bex was paid $15.9 million in stock awards and options in 2013, along with a base salary of a modest $2 million. His contract with Time Warner extended through 2017, included a generous exit package. Uh, sorry, skip through all this. Um, eyes paid, CEOs returned. Sorry, I'm trying to pull the right article. Okay, well, okay. Well, while I'm pulling this up, Dan, why don't you answer just one thing quickly? Because if whether or not those exact figures are right, so whether the, the ratio is currently at, let's say, 300 uh, to 1, and uh, the worker compensation is 10%, and whether or not those are exact numbers, but if you said that you would understand or agree with that, do you think that that is commensurate with the work that a CEO is doing, like their performance, that it, that they what they do should be equal to the fact that the worker themselves should be getting that in, in wage stagnation? Uh so I want to cautious when you say should, uh, like the value, like are, are they, is a CEO laboring as hard as 300 employees? No, of course not. They're not out there doing that, especially if, you know, when it comes to physical labor mm -hmm. or even, you know, thinking hard, of course, but that doesn't matter in this case. It's not about how much work they're doing. We don't pay people in this society based on how much effort they put in. Uh, mm -hmm. They put in based on how skilled they are and, and how much of, they can move the needle. And, mm -hmm. and a, a CEO of a company can move the needle uh, extremely one way or the direction. A Walmart greeter can do fuck all to move a needle no matter what he does across the board. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, there is no Walmart greeter out there that, you know, 
on either, either the best employee in the world or the, the worst employee in the world, that stock is not even moving 0.0001% that day, as mm -hmm. opposed to the CEO can completely change the course of the business. So it's not about how much they work. Mm -hmm. It's about how much they benefit everyone and, and how important they are at the company. Okay, so uh, I found the first thing here. Basically, in the 1970s, the ratio CEO paid to the average worker was about 20 to 1 to 30 to 1. This was known as internal equity, and this is how it sure. was basically uh, compared. Um, this was merely a useful sales tool, even though the consultants didn't have solid evidence or theoretical justification for this method. They could attract businesses by vowing to set ambitious goals for their clients. Uh, external equity became the foundation of the series of pay practices and procedures that guaranteed the CEO pay would continue to skyrocket. And it's something that I've observed for over first hand. Sorry, this is the first time account of someone who's writing about CEO practices. So as this grew exponentially, it grew for the large part due in the fact that CEOs were no longer paid salaries. In fact, some CEOs now make as little as one dollar compared to what they used to make, and now they're paid in stock options. And I guess the justification for for that would be that you feel that by being paid in stock options, it behooves the the person who's working in the company to be able to perform better because they'll get better returns on their stock options, for example. I mean, I would agree with that. Yes, for the most part, I, w I would want. I mean, that's the same reason when you're when you're creating a startup, mm -hmm. right? You don't want to have all of your uh, co-founders or employees or whatever at the very beginning, literally just being paid salary because they have no skin in the game, right? If it goes, mm -hmm. you know, if it goes well, the, you know, they're just paid hourly. If it goes to shit, they don't care one way or another. As opposed to having people uh, in a company that have a vested interest in it being worth more and doubling or tripling their thing. If you bring in a CEO to a company and they think that they can make a huge change and turn the company around, sign of like a, a Steve Jobs did to Apple type of thing, you're mm -hmm. going to want stock. I don't think Steve Jobs would have been very happy if he came back to Apple and he was making a million a year in salary. I think he did the right thing instead in requesting as much stock compensation as he could, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I mean, in theory, I, I'd agree with you, but I think the reality of the situation doesn't bear that out. So one one thing is, first off, what's the oversight of this, right? Like who exactly looks over this? Who who basically polices CEO performance to find out whether or not they're doing a good job? Well, that's not how it works. Well, okay, the board of directors does. What do you mean? Of course they do. The board well, no, no, is but he, he, do that. I thought he was implying like a, some government uh, out there that's like seeing how a CEO does, like how CEOs get into place. I don't think that's the case. A board obviously can hire and fire a CEO depending mm -hmm. on the rights that a board has. Not all boards can do everything along those lines, mm -hmm. with, you know, depending on voting control. But that said... Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's two things, actually. It's a board, and uh, today's large corporations, they hire consultants to evaluate CEO performance, and they do what's well, called a paper performance are... compensation package. Sure. Okay. But th those would be paid for by the company. A consultant doesn't have any actual power. But anyway, go, 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 No, go, absolutely. Go. But one of the problems is that the CEOs actually have a say in who hires these, consul these consultations as well. I don't believe that. I, I mean, like, I'm sure they have like so, some level of a say, but a, but a board's not going to let themselves get fucked by a CEO that's like going to clearly like slant like these evaluations. Like, that's insane. Well, uh, I mean, again, a lot of this depends on how much power. Like, there's a lot of boards that are out there that have tremendous power, but not the power to fire the CEO. It's about if the CEO is a founding CEO if they have control. That's not uncommon. I bet a large amount of uh, large companies, the CEO has more power than the board. Well, wait, we should, well, we should clarify if we're talking about publicly traded companies or, or companies where like the CEO has like well, over 50%. Oh, sure. let's, okay. let's do public traded companies. It's okay, because the CEO just, doesn't just have- all the statistics and the information on that, it's going to be publicly available, right? So I can actually pull it up and talk yeah, about and, it. Yeah, and where the CEO doesn't have over 51% of the company's shares or whatever. Correct. Right? Okay, yeah, fair enough. Um, so yeah, in that case, uh, yeah, I continue. So go ahead. Okay, so so this actually creates what what's called in the organ or sorry in the industry is called a, like a kingmaker situation, right? In which the CEO can actually appoint the 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 oversight into their own performance. Uh, you mean explain what you mean exactly? How is the CEO going to have 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 over their own performance? Exactly? He's saying that the CEO has a large say in appointing people that evaluates his own performance. Therefore, the CEO can choose people that will always give him a positive evaluation. Not always, but the the opportunity is there. I, I mean, I, I guess that goes to show. Do you think that the CEO has inherent power over the board? I mean, I guess if if that's the case, then I can't disagree with that. But I, I don't I don't know if that's the case. The board and the CEO are both aligned. It is not good for a board to get rid of a CEO in most cases or to have issue with it. It lowers the valuation of the company. So that's the not what the is question is. That's not what this is about. Okay. Okay. The, the question is centering on the on the uh, on the idea that the CEO can essentially make himself the king by not having to um. By, by not having to answer anybody because he chooses his own like evaluations. But, but that's not the case. The board can uh, 
can install people to do this. It's not just from the CEO. The board does have power in these cases of public companies. So it's just well, that's true. what's being contested right now. By who? By him? Yes. Oh, well, no, that's, a, that's of course the case. The board has a huge amount of power in these companies, especially public companies. What are you talking about? A CEO can't stop a, a valuation of himself. If that's the case, they're, I mean, really? You believe that? That is their CEO. I'm, 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 no, 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 I'm not, I'm not saying that's exclusively it. I'm saying that there is a situation, right? And this situation as well as a handful of other factors is going to lead to what I'm bringing this towards. Because again, if they're getting paid more, I would expect, or at least I would hope for these, you know, Fortune 500 companies, that the performance would correlate with their high salaries, right? Because right now, and personally for me, I think these these salaries are outrageous. Like, I don't think people should be making 321 times the amount of money than their employers. I, I think that's such a gross disparity. Like, the difference in wealth what? there cre creates a, 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 like a, an antagonism between the worker and can, the employee. Can I right? ask... It's neither here nor there, but I'm curious. Sure. What do you think a good What do you think a good pay? Let's take um, the guy who runs Pepsi. Mm -hmm. What do you think that would be a good good pay for the CEO? How many times the worst employee? I would like to probably see it capped at about five to six times the the, the amount of the employee, and that's me trying to just okay. give you a realistic argument within the frameworks of capitalism, right? Like, what wait, you think sense? it's realistic that the CEO of a company with over ten thousand employees is going to make at most two hundred fifty k a year? So, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was on the same page here. Okay. Go ahead. Well, yeah. uh, the reason I would say that, Destiny, is because there are examples where that works, right? Like, I know, I'm sure you've heard of like uh, the Mondragon. Don't say Mondragon because that's not a good example. <laughs> well, the problem with Mondragon. Why, why, why don't you like hearing so about the it? The, the, the reason that Mondragon doesn't work is because Mondragon cheats and gets around this by forming. So, Mondragon is a federation of co ops. It's not a it single is, co op. It is. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So, so Mondragon would basically say, oh, look, all of our CEO pays are pegged at one to 10 or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then they just make, they spin off like a new company to have like to get around that it's so, like let's say for instance i want the people working in my in my pepsi manufacturing plant mm -hmm. um to be paid about the same as the ceo that owns the company but i want my ceo that owns the company a million dollars well mm -hmm. i'll just make a new i'll just make a new co-op and then those people run the factory so now the ceo of my management co-op will make a hundred times more than the ceo or than the line level worker of like the manufacturing co-op but it's a federation, so it's not all like it's all intra federation when we look at the CEO conversation. Okay, so what you're saying like is that there's, there's, there's so way. many of them, there's so many little ones that they're basically skirting over the fact that that is actually the statistics doesn't actually like bear any fruit for the ten to one ratio. Okay, Do, can you send me stats on that or like information on that? Because I'd love um, to. Because most of what I've read or learned about them is that it's not only like very effective of what they do, but it it works entirely as a worker cooperative. And I mean, well, they, I mean they, like you, you, you can just go look up like what Mondragon is. Mondragon is. I, I, I have the article in front of me right now. It's the sure. So, well, you, so like wiki or whatever you need to do. Like the, the, yeah, the uh, format of the company is that the, the Mondragon is a federation of co-ops. That article that you that. have, yeah, that article you have is not going to say that. In among all the co-ops, mm -hmm. the CEO pay of the highest paid co-op mm -hmm. is only going to be X to whatever of the lowest paid co-op. What it's probably going to say is some vague thing like the CEOs only make X time amount as their low-level employee, but that's it. Like that doesn't mean anything in a federation. You could have a co-op that's very, very rich in that federation and a co-op that's very, very poor. Does that sure, make sense? sure. But in, in, in the richest version of that, does it do they still get restricted at that nine to one ratio? I believe so, but that so, might be a nine to one ratio of like the top manager class in that co-op, which doesn't really help sure, you. Like, how, how does that help me? Like, I, I'm, I'm because curious because that... Walmart could theoretically restructure itself to be a hundred different co-ops, and sure. the top co-op is like the manager class, where like maybe the maybe the owner Walton or whatever that guy gets like a hundred million, and all the other people there get ten million. But but, but, in your, okay but, your, that, but in your example, instead of one person, one CEO of Walmart making like two hundred million dollars, there would be like a hundred CEOs making you know a, a, a smaller amount right in your example there'd be a lot more of the ceo sure but you're nowhere near working class at that point like no, you're, every you're, c-level exec not, in walmart i mean you've already done wealth distribution in your example that, that already sounds like yeah a, you've distributed wealth from one millionaire a little bit to another millionaire well then, so, I guess to, 100, that's like, to 100 millionaires right and like i i feel like we're making progress um okay but, but a mondragon there agreed upon wage ratios between executive work and field factory work which earns minimum wage these ratios range from three to one to nine point one in different cooperatives with the average as being five to one that is the general manager of the average mondragon cooperative earns more than five times as much as the theoretical minimum wage of the cooperatives yeah and it's it's, it's decided by the worker owners through a democratic vote as well 
So okay. they, they, they actually get to, the, the, the workers actually get to decide that. But anyways, sorry, we're, we're, we're getting off topic. But yeah, if, if you're asking what I would consider to be an ameliorable situation, that's what I would say. Um, but back to what you were talking about, Hart Dan, um, mm-hmm. do you, have you read the studies? That, like uh, when I was talking about them in that video, that, because there's not just one, there's numerous ones now that show the highest paid CEOs are the worst performers. Well, there's so a in lot those more... studies, real quick, just to clarify, sure, sure, yeah, yeah. The, the the studies that talk about like the fact that like at the very very top for mm-hmm. some poor performing companies, like those CEOs might be overcompensated. Mm-hmm. They would adjust this compensation uh, on the scale of like single percentage digits. They're not talking about bringing the compensation down from the hundreds of millions to the hundreds of thousands. They're talking about like maybe instead of getting like uh you know like a twelve million dollar salary or, or stock option, maybe he should only get like nine million. Like mm-hmm. these aren't anywhere near the level of like five to one equality or whatever that you're looking for. It's not, but we're talking. Okay, we're, we're talking about we're talking about Fortune 500 companies right now. We're talking about the reality yeah. situation. These are these are the champions of industry. These this is you know these these are the ones leading the world, right? These are these are the major corporations. In these corporations, based on performance, the highest paid CEOs are the worst performers. Okay, but there's a lot more reasons for that besides the fact that they're highest paid. They could be the reason they're getting paid so much is they're going into companies that are you know, CEOs don't want to go into them because they're in a challenging point of growth. Like for a good example, this being like, if you were to come into uh, a Xerox right now, you might have to pay more because Xerox is kind of viewed, I mean, this is, it might not actually be the case, but Xerox to me at least is viewed as kind of a dead company of the past, probably being replaced. If you wanted to get a CEO, a good paying CEO to leave someone like Pepsi or someone else who's in a growth industry to come to a dying industry where things are going to go down, mm-hmm. all that CEO might be able to do at all is slow the growth or lev- or levy the ship. So if you look at that, it's not fair. You're going to say, oh, this guy was paid a fuck ton of money and there was no growth at all. He's a bad CEO, but you don't know that things could have gone the other way and this could have gone way down into the toilet as a result of that. Right. But are you not just giving me an anecdote? Like this is, uh, this is, a, I, I'm not saying that's not true. I'm not saying that it couldn't happen, but is that not just an isolated example? And I'm trying to give you basically. I, I I, okay. So what Dan is saying empirical is that evidence, right? When, when we talk about like, yeah, when we talk about compensation, people oftentimes are compensated for risk. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to be the CEO of a company that's having a lot of trouble, somebody might have to offer you more money to be a CEO of that company versus like a very stable company where you feel like you've got more job security and things are, are going to be more reliable. So mm-hmm. it would make sense in that case that underperforming companies probably pay their CEOs more because they have to in order to hold on to them because nobody wants to be CEOs of those companies would, would be the... A potential confound, I guess. Yeah, or- I mean, like, an example of that, like, mm-hmm. let's say that right now uh, you're the CEO of Amazon. Wait, wait, wait. Or- I can give a real-life example of this. Um, okay. okay. Public teachers get paid more than private school teachers. A lot of people don't know that. The reason why is because private school teachers really like working at private schools. The environment is way more stable. They feel like they have more control over their jobs. They feel like they make more um, of an influence in the lives of their kids. So that's a place where, like, even though they get paid, um, like, public school teachers get paid more than private school teachers, but they produce bad results. Well, it's not because they're actually like fucking those schools up or anything. It's just like those are the types of people that would take those jobs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. And, and fair enough. Uh, again, though, but the research doesn't bear out what you're both saying. The research found that 13% of the 150 CEOs at the bottom of the list had done mergers over the past year, and the average return from the mergers was a negative 0.51% amongst Wait, the top. Wait, that doesn't. Well, I don't yeah. think that disproves what we're saying. Well, I mean, I'm, you, I'm, would ex- you would. Ex- go ahead. No, sir. Um, amongst the top eight CEOs, 19% did mergers, and those deals resulted in a negative performance of 1.3.8% over the following three years. The returns are almost three times lower for the high-paying firms than the low-paying firms. This means wasteful okay. spending destroys shareholder value. Okay. No, it doesn't. It means that right now, if you're trying to get fucking Bezos to take over Sears, right? Do you, so if you're Sears, mm-hmm. right, a company that's absolutely going to shit or a JCPenney or something, like some, something we, or a Radio Shack, something we know, it's just not going to be here, a blockbuster, it's gone, right? Mm-hmm. If you're trying to lure a Bezos away from an Amazon as a result of that, the mm-hmm. best he might be able to do is something that has destroyed shareholder equity, but it could have been way worse if you didn't get him in that first place. Do you understand what I'm saying here? You're, you're saying, I, oh, I these, t- companies totally lost, these companies lost value. Sure, mm-hmm. they could have lost way more. They could have gone to zero. And if you want to try and get someone who's talented, who could possibly right the ship, you, mm-hmm. you're taking a gamble that someone at the top can make the change. And that, that is the case. The one at the top can direct everyone to do fundamental shifts, completely change everything. So yeah, that person might have to be paid more. And the best result they might be able to get out of that situation is a lousy merger mm-hmm. that was worse than when they started. But that doesn't mean that person's responsible. That could have been happening times 10 otherwise. So that brings into question the fact that you you think that 
I, I mean, you can teach me about this. I mean, this is not something I know a ton about, but that CEOs are basically bought and traded like celebrities, right? Like the better you are at running the company, you became more valuable. You're like the LeBron, LeBron James of running uh, McDonald's. And all of a sudden, another company might want to headhunt you to hire you because of that. And that's the way CEOs are hired based on that policy. Um, I know. Listen, I know where you're going with this. Um, sure. You're trying to say there's cronyism and that companies would like hire someone, you know, to hook up a PO. That's possible. And I'm sure that that's been done. I don't think that with public companies, I would be shocked if that's typically the case. I think that typically the board, mm -hmm. which is a, a, a collection of people, not just one guy trying to hook up their friend, yeah, has an interest in, in increasing their wealth. OK, mm -hmm. if I'm on the board of a company, that means I have equity in the company and I want my equity to be worth as much. So when I'm doing this, I'm not throwing money away for shits and giggles. I'm not trying to hook up my buddy. I'm mm -hmm. trying to make sure that my equity in the company goes up as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So I'm not I don't want to give away a lot of money. I want to mm -hmm. do something that has a high likelihood or the best likelihood of increasing my value in the company, mm -hmm. right? And you're going to find very few people who are willing to say, you know what, Bob, my buddy from next door, mm -hmm. man, he sucks at running a company, but I got to hook him up, dude. Let, let's bring him in to run Pepsi. I think that's unlikely because your worth will go down. And the, I would say the only places you could see this happen would be in very stable companies where a CEO doesn't have to do fuck all. Sure, you could have some malfeasance in that. Like if you're in the fucking dog food business, I don't know how much you can fuck up there. There's not a lot of new products you're releasing. There's not a lot of targeted marketing. Sure, maybe they're hiring Bob and they're paying too much because literally the fucking breeder could do that job. There's nothing to it. Sure, mm -hmm. I would agree in that case, but I don't think that's most cases. I think that there's not a lot of companies like that. Fair enough. But apparently the internal hiring policies of most uh, major publicly traded companies happen to be that they, they, they don't hire external CEOs. They actually promote or hire within. I don't think that that's necessarily... Uh, a bad thing because there's other companies who hire from within other companies as well. We know, like, for instance, with Google, Facebook, with Fang, Facebook, mm -hmm. Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, these guys aggressively now are poaching each other's top talent from in inside. So if you have a star that knows the dog food business like fucking no one else in there, and you know maybe this guy's going to get recruited from someone else, you might want to make them an offer that would be better than what they could get being a CEO of a competitor. I don't think that's unreasonable to that amount. But uh, that kind of directly contradicts what you were saying before, because you're saying that these CEOs have to basically inflate their value, right? They have to become more valuable as people so that they basically have a worth when you want to trade them or hire them as a different CEO to a different company. But it doesn't actually work that way. I think that's a myth that we've created, like the idea of these superstar celebrity CEOs that basically are the champions of industry and they're you know integral to these companies. And I'm not saying that certain ones aren't. There are certainly companies in which the CEOs are very, very integral to the company, right? Like, so given the examples, Steve Dobbs. But again, that's something that that's more about a person who built that company from his own, you know, from okay. from the bottom up. Let, I think I can maybe explain this in a very simple way. Sure. Using your ideal system, where the employee, the CEO, is paid maximum five times what the lowest paid person is, we can assume there's going to essentially be very little CEOs that are making over a million dollars a year. Because you know, I mean, most people aren't paid two hundred grand at the lowest position. So what I would like to tell you, that if there's a world out there where I can create a, some fucking lemonade company and go mm -hmm. pay a million dollars and get fucking uh, Bezos to run it for me, I'm going to do it. And that's why that doesn't work. Because I'd pay $2 million a year to get Bezos to run my company. And that's already more than five times the lowest employee. That mm -hmm. number does not work. And if you think I'm going to be the high bidder to get Bezos to run my company, you're out of your fucking mind. Because that dude obviously is outstanding at running companies. He can turn probably dirt into fucking gold. From the way he does things mm -hmm. so i mean do you, do you think it's reasonable that i would be able to afford to hire bezos i, I don't think you'd be able to uh, to afford why it, not no. why not are, are you saying in this thought to... oh so you're saying Hang in this on. thought experience yeah yeah okay sure, sure yeah yeah of course so that's reasonable that I can hire arguably the best CEO that we have in the world right now. Yeah, but that's not the way the world works, right? Like I'm, I'm trying to Why say not? that the, the data doesn't back these things that you're saying up, right? Like the, no, that's, they, 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 they hire internally, it. typically. That's that's how this works. They don't hire oh, okay, external sure. external people. And yeah, sure, they want to go grab them. This sounds like you know a, a scenario that would make sense, but that's just not the way it ends up panning out. Okay, but I, I, I don't understand. Under your system, I would be able to outbid and hire Bezos for you know, six times pay. So now we're, sorry, now, now, now we're talking about like Madrigon. We're not talking about like the, like the, well, the real world. The I, I, I just don't, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let's refocus. Okay. Sure, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm doing my late game. Okay. Let's refocus. Okay. So there's two different big debates going on here. Okay. Now, is there a chance that CEOs are overcompensated at the top end? Sure. 
And I've seen varying things on this, that the highest paid CEOs re return less for the company. That seems to be something that's been borne out. I'm pretty sure I'm looking at the same article that you looked at. I've, I've looked at this in the past. That could be true. But that that assertion that maybe the highest paid CEOs need to get paid a little bit less is not really related at all to this discussion unless you're going to tie it in. Because we were talking about changing the way that these guys are paid. It's going to be slightly. It's not going to be like from 10 million a year to like 500,000 a year. It's going to be from like 10 million to like 8 million. It's going to be like bringing their wages down a little bit or sure. salaries down a little bit in line with something else. So this isn't really related to like pegging CEO pay like on some arbitrary percentage or whatever to, to a, a low level employee. This is like a totally separate discussion. Well, sure. I mean, I've actually got three different studies that have shown that the, the more CEOs are paid, the worse they perform and the worse the companies themselves perform. So, okay, sure. mean, so for me, the idea that CEOs are making this exorbitant amount of money, uh, you know, like we said, 300 to times more than the, than the employees themselves, uh, it can't even be justified on that level. Like, I, I would like wait, to hear, uh, well, Dan, wait, okay, I'd like to hear Dan's reasoning yeah, behind that, sure. for example. It, like, the system yeah, doesn't real, seem real. to work. Okay, so first of all, I don't think that that's fundamentally possible within capitalism, what you're saying on those studies. And I'll give you the reason why. Sure. People who, public companies who run companies right now, or sorry, public boards uh, on companies, sure. they're not like, I want to pay as much money as possible. They want to get the best person for the job. And if that was a fact, what you're saying, if it was actually true, mm -hmm. they would pay less money to get a candidate. But they're not. And I can guarantee, if, if you believe that capitalism somehow drives greed, Right, which I know that you do. That it just—it's enriching the top one percent. Right. That, it that drives. It drives greed. Okay. How do I? How do I put this? If you believe <laughs> that people on a board are fundamentally greedy and want to have as much wealth as possible, why would you? Why would you think these people are incapable of being saying, "Hey, if we pay someone less money, good, we get a better CEO. Awesome." Do you think they're dumb? That like, if this was a fact, what you're saying, they would certainly pay less people. Or so they would pay a CEO less money, but they don't. Right. So that I, I get the logic of what you're saying, but like again, I'm I'm trying to like keep this to like you know the, the reels or the feels. Like you want you want the stats and the statistics. So that's why I wanted to bring these three different studies and, and tell you that this this that doesn't bear out either, right? Like the numbers. Wait, but that on the doesn't. It literally doesn't make sense though, because if it was a fact that lower paid CEOs get mm -hmm. better performance and gave me more money, why would I not pay someone less money at my company? Everyone would do that. But well, that's not that's that. So that's a naive analysis. That's not necessarily true. Companies can make bad investments with their money. That happens sometimes. All, most of them. What he's saying essentially. Look at what happened them. when Google started the open office design when they got rid of cubicles, and and every single other major tech company followed suit. And now we've got a whole bunch of empirical data saying that well, actually, that's stupid. The open campus things don't actually work well. Like they actually bother more employees than they help. Like it's possible well, that I, trends like that can happen in business. So bad investments happen. Sure. As far as open offices goes, we'd have to look more at that in particular. That is no, nope, you don't have to look at it. I, I'll do this instead. I'll bet you five million dollars, and you can go and look it up later. Okay, and I'll give you five million. I'll work the rest of my life for you to pay you off. Okay, open office okay. plans are bad. The empirical data shows that they're bad. Every major tech company tried to follow suit because Google wanted to experiment with them. And, and why are they why are they still doing it? Because you don't get rechanging your entire fucking office is a lot of fucking money <laughs> to rebuild your entire fucking multi million or hundred million dollar campus or whatever. I don't know how much these building costs, but. But like it, like newer buildings that are being made, they're not doing the open the open office plans anymore because they don't work. I'm not sure that's the case, but uh, I'll, I'll look into it more before I can say one. Okay, the other. five million dollars sure. is on the line for you. This is the most the best <laughs> investment of your time you can make is looking this up because I'll give you five million dollars if I'm wrong. Okay. Okay. It's it's just a one way bet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's the best. I, I accept <laughs> you. <Perfect. laughs> can I can I get it on too? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm done with my league game. I'm 100% plugged in. Okay. Pulling way back. Okay. And let's refocus. Okay. Sure. So sure. people in capitalism are paid because somebody's willing to pay them that amount. Now, why somebody's willing to be paid a certain amount or why people are willing to pay someone a certain amount, uh, there's a confluence of factors here. There's come, several things that come together. Now, the, the broadest claim that we've made that we can analyze is that typically people are more qualified, the the more qualified to be lower down the, the ranks than they are to be higher up the ranks. It's more likely that if we select out of a group of people, we can find somebody that's easier to be like a burger flipper or a Walmart greeter than we can somebody that can either manage or run Based a company. Based on socioeconomic reasons. reasons and training, right? We all agree on yes. that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Keep so going. we would expect in this environment, if we sorted people out this way, that one out of every 100 people is suited to be a CEO, that 10 out of 100 are suited to be managers, that sure. 50 out of 100 are, yeah, that we would probably pay the, the, the highest people on that roster more than we would the lowest people on that roster. That's probably we would expect that sure. to be true, right? Yeah. We would also probably expect to be, to be paying CEOs more the larger the company gets because you'd have more responsibility and there'd be even more competition for that position at the time. We would expect that to be true, right? 
Yeah. To, but so, to, to a certain extent, yeah. right? Like, I think we also agree that, or at least I hope we agree, well, that let's the, the, amount is, the, the, the amount is, has gone completely out of control, right? When you Okay, so let's look at that sentence you just said. Sure. To a certain extent. What do you mean by that? To what extent? Well, that's what I'm asking you. Like, do, do, you, do you agree that if someone is making 321 times, but their employers are making, that, that, that this has grown to, to basically an unsustainable amount? Well, let's say that we could measure the tweets that two people can make. Let's say one guy tweets out, I want to kill all gay people. It's a, um, let's say that one of them is a low level employee. He tweets that out, nothing happens to the company, he gets fired. Sure. Let's say that the CEO tweets that out and the company stock dips 10% and there are massive layoffs at the company because a whole bunch of shit happens that, that fucks them up, right? Sure. Do you think in that case it makes sense and that the CEO should probably be compensated 321 times their employees if they can have a, an effect on the company that's over 321 times greater than the low level employee can have? Well, you're looking at that from the bottom up. Then you're you're basically. I think that's like what what's that called? The anthropological version or analysis? Because at the end of the day, well, yeah, he has that power to do though to do so because we've given him that power. That doesn't justify whether or not he should have that power or that he should have 321 times the pay of the other employee. Sure, but we're not talking about the morality of the structure of a company. We're talking about the descriptive analysis. Oh, I hope we're going to be. I hope we're going to be talking. Oh, okay, about well, if you want to, well. so then, yeah, but then, but then, but then, eventually, I was hoping we get to that road. Yeah, but now we're going to a different question. Sure. Should there be CEOs? Is it a different question than are CEOs overcompensated? If you want to ask, should there be CEOs? Well, that's, that's a valid question, that's a, but that's a totally separate discussion to are CEOs overcompensated? That was kind of our discussion. Like, I, I, I never started this by saying, should there be CEOs? Yeah, but if we're but if but we can't say our CEOs overcompensate and they go well hold on I don't even know if CEO should have that much responsibility in the first place it's like a whole, totally separate conversation it would be like if you asked me like what's the best way for me to murder everybody on my floor and I start giving you a list of weapons and you say well hold on you shouldn't be murdering everyone on your floor it's like okay wait but that's like a totally separate conversation right like in one we're saying what's the best way to do something or how does something work and then the other we're saying well should it even work this way at all right so if you ask is a CEO overcompensated well then it's like okay well let's look at ways that we can measure if they're overcompensated or not but then you say well hold on CEO shouldn't exist at all. Well, okay, well, I, I, I never said that. Problem. I never said CEO. Okay. Well, I never then, why said that saying, sentence. Okay, so then back to my original example. Sure. A, a CEO can have a major impact on a company. Why do mm -hmm. you think that shouldn't be the case? I never said that either. I, it's, it's whether or not they should be uh, commensurated the way they are for that impact on the company. Oh, okay. So yeah. if a CEO can have a massive impact on a company, you don't think they should be compensated for the impact that they have on the company. Right. But again, you're giving them the power to make that that impact, right? Well, because that's you because they're that literally the that? chief executive. Yeah, of well, course. Exactly. So, so we, we, we have the scenario now where they've grown to the fact that they make 321 times what the average salary makes. They're, they're making, you know, $90 million a year in some cases, right? And so because of that, they then have the power to affect these companies, these massive companies with that power. Wait, they don't right? have the power to affect the companies because they're paid a lot. They have the power to affect these companies because they're the head executive of a massive company. That's no, no, no sorry. In, in, in your example about the tweet. When you, when you were saying that if they make a tweet, then all of a sudden this is going to tank the company. That is, yes, because they have the power bested upon them by being a high-paid CEO of their company. Not, being high-paid has nothing to do with it. It's the fact that they're the CEO. Sure. But the CEO, so the pay yeah, has nothing case. to do with it. The CEO is the head executive of a company, right? Sometimes the spiritual leader of a company, sure. especially if we look at somebody like Elon Musk, right? And yeah. these people have massive sway over a company, not because of how much they're paid, but just because they're the head executive of a company. Even sure. if they only got paid sure. 10 to 1, they would still have this much sway over the company, right? Right. Uh, so, okay, yeah, I, I think we all agree on this. We're getting bogged down on semantics. Well, like, no, no. What? So the question is, is like, why do you think that it's not right to compensate somebody for the amount of influence they wield over a company? If I would, I do, I, I do not, well, because I don't think the compensation is is going to be commensurate with the amount of influence or what they do within the company. More, okay. more, more importantly, what they do within the company. I, I don't think that a CEO's job and what he does as work is is reflective in the amount of money that he makes. And and I know that you can say to me that, well, he doesn't actually make that much in salary. He makes all of his money in stock options. No, no, I would never say something so fucking stupid. Of course, we're going to look okay. at overall compensation. I'm not okay. just looking at salary, right? So, um, I, so I don't know what the total compensation of like the CEO of McDonald's is, sure. but like, would you agree that he has just as much impact over a company as like a cook? Or five times as much impact. He has more impact over the company than the cook does. Sure, but you're saying you want to peg his salary at five times that of a cook. Do you think that that? How does that make sense? Well, no. Okay, we're, we're changing topics now. You're trying to ask what is my ideal scenario, and then we're gonna have to get into when I was giving you the example of Madrigan, right? And I was saying that I prefer the idea of a worker cooperative in which they have a voting power, and as well, there would be a cap on how much the CEO gets paid. And because using that example again with Madrigan, it has been established to be a very successful model, right? I mean, their net worth well, I think is is twenty billion dollars right now. They stopped accepting people into uh, the co-op program four and a half years ago.
Sure, but like also this is like this is literally like a one-off example too. Like it does work. It seems like Mondragon is is working. I agree with that. Of course, but it's not like it's so successful that like co-ops are now like ubiquitous amongst all of. They they are absolutely not, and I totally agree with you there. But I mean, we we live within capitalism, right? And there's Mm going to be way more money and for investment money, especially for the startups of something that isn't a cooperative, right? And I've I've told you this before because I've I've shown you. Well, I don't know if it was me or Ben Bridges. We showed you the statistics on this, but the startup rate is going to be uh, less for cooperatives, obviously by a huge scale, but the decay rate is the same. The decay rate of companies that happen to be cooperatives decay at the same rate as companies that are private. So that would indicate okay. to me that they can be just as uh, successful, and at the same time, they offer their it's workers. It's also possible, though. It's also possible that co-ops maybe succeed in separate industries than, than than privately owned firms do. Maybe co-ops are better suited towards, say, like farming, or maybe co-ops are better suited towards, say, running factories than they are towards like tech businesses or service industry stuff. That's possible as well, right? But that's sure. not a, that, that's not necessarily what we're related to talking about. So to refocus, right? Yeah. Because yeah. we keep going back to this, like CEOs, three hundred twenty-one times their employees. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's fair, or do you, or like? Well, I think Dan, the, the, ultimately, shouldn't Dan be answering this question, though? Like, is whether or not. Fuck, he... Dan is giving bad answers, it's triggering the fuck out of me, okay? <laughs> what, what I'm asking is, is that why do you not think that the McDonald's sure. CEO should be compensated for the additional amount of leverage that he has over McDonald's than a cook? I think he should be compensated for that. I do not think he should be compensated 321 times. What is What times should it be? I don't work for McDonald's. I don't know the inner Why do you think this, this, Well, in this specific okay. example, you're trying to peg me on this, but what am I supposed to tell I'm you? Not, like, well, okay, uh, I don't want to specific. The, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> why do you think 321 is wrong? Something inside of you is telling you that that's wrong. Why? Why is that wrong? Well, because it never used to be that way, and and the companies were just as effective back in the 1950s when it was 20 to 1 or 50, uh, 5 to 1, right? So, well, first off... Uh, okay, wait. So, real quick. You said it never used to be that way. This is a bad argument, so we're not even going to look at that. You said companies were just as effective. When you say just as effective, measured in what way? What do you mean by that? that because they were, companies today are larger than they ever were, ever absolutely, have Absolutely, and they're, and they're producing more wealth than they ever were, right? But everything has been scaled up since then. So, for the time, if we were to look back as in terms of their effect, like their efficacy for that... Re- time period wait hello yeah i'm there did i, did I oh yeah. yeah okay so like you, you just said something in there everything has been scaled up yeah of course yeah. like ceo pay has been scaled up as well you but would it, has, it hasn't be been case? scaled up in, in commensurate to their what they do like they they have what do you not, mean what be, they okay, do because they're not doing 321 times like they're like I don't get what part of this that, that you're not understanding. Like, do you, do you think it's justified that, that that they're making so much more? Like, all of a sudden there was this boom. Like I said, historically, yeah, after so, the, so especially like, after the 1990s, that, that you, it, you seem to think that like there's some tie-in, and I don't know if this goes. I'm making a lot of assumptions. I don't know if this yeah, goes sure. to, like that, the the fetishization of like blue collar work or whatever. But like, here's a question, okay? Sure. Do you acknowledge that walking across a tightrope? is the exact same challenge, whether it's five feet off the ground or a mile off the ground. It's the same thing. You're just walking across a rope. But even though you're doing the exact same thing, walking across the one five miles off the ground or or a mile off the ground, that's way more fucking risk. It's the same job. But if you fuck it up, you fucking die. Absolutely, right? absolutely. And Just again, because the CEO of a major company, but this is again, you're, you're giving me these anecdotal answers, right? Like these, these are great. No, thought, no, no, no. Well, no, no, these are great it, thought experiences. But at the end of the day, like you, you wanted me to do the feels over the reels, like because you're always talking about how like you know lefties get marred and in, in this kind of stuff. But you're giving me these ideas. You, you want to give me something that's comparable? It's, wait, I agree so, with you. Wait, wait, it's wait, it's wait, way scary on, to do that, this, that type of act, right? To do with, this has nothing to do with feels over reels, right? This is just a, a thought experiment to explain how CEOs of major companies have way more responsibility, even well, if they're doing the same job of course, as a CEO of a smaller of course, company. But what I say it's a thought experiment is because there's no like there's no metrics as to the measurement of what you're talking about. Like, sure, that's sure, it's, 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 way, it's way harder to do what you're talking about. Sure, I agree. You just got a yes out of me. That doesn't mean that all of a sudden you've explained why CEO can make 321 times the pay of their employee now when they used to make 20 times the employee of their pay now. Well, let's look it up. Um, When was McDonald's founded? Let's look this up. So McDonald's started in 1955. How many employees McDonald's have in 19, we'll say 70? Can I find this number? Can anybody find me the, the, um, Starting in 1955, there were seven McDonald's stores. 12 more were added in 1957. There were 40. Okay, by 1970, there were 1,500 stores. Sure. Okay, how many McDonald's exist in the United States? Right now, there are 16,000 stores. Okay, so if McDonald's started, let's say in 1957, there were 40 stores, and now there are 16,000, right? Yep. 
Yeah. That's yeah. like 40 times more than there were before. And mm -hmm. then countless more employees, maybe even more than 40 times more employees, because I don't know what other side industries McDonald's has grown, like meat manufacturing, whatever, to grow. Yeah, 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 of course. Do you think that it makes sense that we would see the CEO pay rise accordingly with an expansion of this business, that we would expect that to scale up? So in, in this case, though, we're also we're starting to forget the fact that the CEO isn't basically the sole per person like driving this company, right? Of course not. He's not. Yeah, of course. Right. So to say then that because it's scaled up by that size, that one person, one employee deserves to have the same scale at the same time to me also is It's not just one employee. I'm sure that all the, oh, I'm sure every C-level exec of McDonald's gets paid a fuck ton of money. They, and I'm sure everybody that answers them directly also probably gets paid a fuck ton more than they did back in the 60s as well. Right? They do. Okay. So just so I'm clear, your your statement then is that it's grown and the, the, the pay has been commensurate with this growth. That's, that's... I don't know if the pay has been commensurate with its growth. That makes it sound like the pay of a CEO should grow in accordance with the pay of a low-level employee. But the fact of the matter is, is that in with 1960... The company. With, with the company. No, I don't, yeah, think, that, I don't the... think that's unreasonable. Okay, well then let me ask you if this sounds unreasonable. In 1960, sure. if one employee fucked up a cheeseburger, mm -hmm. one customer was disappointed. Sure. And today, in 2019, if one employee fucks up a burger, mm -hmm. one customer is disappointed. Back in 1960, mm -hmm. if the CEO fucked something up and mm -hmm. half the McDonald's closed, that mm -hmm. would be seven McDonald's closing. Sure. Now, if the CEO fucks up and half the McDonald's close, that's over 8,000 in the United States alone. Mm -hmm. so, so it so seems there's like there's the, the amount yeah. of risk... So it seems like the amount of risk and the amount of impact the CEO has has grown massively and that the amount of risk that an employee has has not really grown at all. So I wouldn't expect uh, the pay to grow okay. similarly because it's not commensurate. The responsibility of the CEO and the number of employees that he is like kind of has ownership of or control of has massively grown, but employee responsibilities more or less remain the same. Mm -hmm. So, so okay, so this, this is what it all comes down to. Um, if, if I could bring back statistics for you, if I could bring back stats that demonstrate whether or not the growth of the company has also been uh, at the same growth, like the, the pay of the CEO can be measured in both the risk and assessment of the growth of the companies. Because again, in your McDonald's like example, I don't know the inner workings of McDonald's, but if that was the case, then then, then you would say it was justified because their growth of their, their expansive growth, which has happened again since basically the 1990s exclusively when it, when it exploded, uh, you, 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 you're saying that it would be directly demonstrable to be. I don't think that there is a moral answer to how much a CEO ought to be paid. When you say something like uh, like CEOs of Fortune 500 companies make three to 21 times their employee, I don't know if that's good or bad. Now, if you want to talk about whether or not CEO compensation, no, 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 I'm, not talking, I'm not talking about normative normative claims. Let's make a descriptive claim. Like I'm just saying, if we can measure, if we can measure it out. Right. And at the end the of the CEOs day, CEOs are overpaid compared to like the level of risk or whatnot, they assume. Yeah. I mean, that's sure. it's totally possible that that could be it, that maybe that pay needs to be scaled down or maybe it needs to be restructured. Less stock, more stock or something but, like that. That could be possible. Like, OK. All right. But it, but if that restructuring isn't going to do one, it has sure. no impact whatsoever on the average employee's compensation Two, pegging that arbitrarily on the lowest paid employee doesn't mean anything. It doesn't. And three, if we did talk about adjusting their salaries or their compensation, it's still going to be on the scale of like tens of millions of dollars. So it's still going to be far, far, far and above like what a line level employee is paid. Sure. But I mean, again, we were talking to CEO at pay at the start of this. Um, we didn't. Sure. We haven't really started talking about the employees. I mean, I, I don't like I can't remember. Do you do you hate moral arguments or do you love moral arguments? We can talk about moral arguments if yeah. you want. Yeah, well, but I don't. I, well, I just think it's because you're bringing up the employers, like the idea that they're 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 wages I, I only, have stagnated because again their jobs have remained the exact same, right? It's well, like I'm only idea. bringing them up. I bring them up for two reasons. Because one, your suggested alternative was that CEO pay should be pegged on the pay of the lowest level employee, and two, you're making it sound like CEO pay has grown too quickly because employee pay hasn't grown enough to keep up with the CEO pay. So that's the only reason why I keep harkening back to, to employee pay. Sure. Um. What was the other thing I wanted to ask? Oh, okay. So here's the other thing. Um, and I, I do want to get Dan's opinion on this because I haven't heard from Dan in the last little okay, while. Okay, yeah, sorry. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was, I, was just, I was moderating. My bad. Yeah. yeah go for yeah. it. No, thanks, Dan. You're doing great. Um, when it comes to also like, so these companies eventually under basically like the ideal scenario, right? Under capitalism and the thriving of all these co corporations, companies, right? These CEOs, they're doing great jobs. So the companies are doing better. The stocks are uh, rising in value and they're continuing to grow and expand. That's the ideal scenario that should be happening with all this. And, th and that's all a good thing, correct? Sure. Sure. Um, and then what what is kind of the end game of all this? Because 
in, in my understanding, especially when it comes to like major American corporations, what I've seen, especially maybe in the past 10 years and a lot in the last year or so, has been mergers and acquisitions, right? There's been basically, it's, it's when, you know, two companies that merge with each other, there's, there's vertical growth, there's vertical acquisitions, for example, but they seem to be cannibalizing each other, right? That's essentially what happens. One becomes successful enough that they can eat up the other one or they can eat up a bunch of smaller assets, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, mergers and acquisitions and mergers, mergers and acquisitions do create um, shareholder wealth of the uh, uh, companies that get acquired. Essentially, a smaller company. They're sure that's good for the shareholders of that company. Typically, if they vote to sell, they think that they're going to get a better outcome by selling than to continue to operate the company. That would be the reason that you did sell. Absolutely, but like the end game of this is that we're getting fewer and fewer companies controlling basically everything, right? I would say that we're well. Um, it depends. Right now, I mean, I assume you're talking about tech, and right now tech is dominated by Fang. And uh, yeah, I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. I'm not against, uh, you know, mon monopoly uh, regulation. I think that's good. I think Google should be broken up. I think there's way too much influence and power that they have. Um, so you're not going to get me saying anything against monopolies, but that doesn't really have anything to do with CEO pay. Okay. Well, I mean, tech was the first example, but I, I like I. This is less of a gotcha moment and more just like I. I would like to know if you if you knew this. This is the companies that control the majority of the food we eat in the entire planet. So I'm just going to send that to you right now. Okay. Um, like, have you seen this image before? Um, oh, everybody's seen these. Yeah, and like yeah. Nestle and shit. Like on like fucking every single fucking company. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes, I've, I've seen this as well, yes. So, I mean, like, un under the current system we have, like, we've got this wonderful illusion of choice. We've got all these products, right? But at the end of the day, it's really just, like, five or six companies that control all of it. Okay. Uh, do you know how many companies control all the beer you drink? It's two. So how is this relevant to anything? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, what's the end result of all these co these corporations growing and doing what they're doing right now? Like, untethered, un un uncontrolled, and regulated, if you want uh, to say okay. that. I mean, they well, are controlled and regulated, but still, this is the end result of where we're headed. Uh, all right, yeah. The goal of a company is not to be moral. The goal of a company is not. A company, it's to create shareholder wealth. Absolutely. So, so again, it's so like the a, so the the result of this is creating more shareholder wealth. And is what and, they're doing. and the result of that is that we're we're getting a now a world in which we live in in which you know smaller and, and smaller monopoly, few, fewer and fewer companies okay, control then, everything. Okay, then we should have better monopoly enforcement. And some of these companies, maybe they should be broken up. I'm not going to argue against that because I don't believe in that. But if that's the case, if companies are getting too large and they have that level of uh, monopoly, then they should be broken up. Sure. Yes, I agree. But but it's it's okay. Well, first off, it's not stopping, and and second, like it's it's getting to the point now where like this this picture, of course, it, it looks it looks dire, right? But it, it's the same thing for almost every industry. If I showed you all the companies that control media, for example, it's six. It's six, six companies control all the media we consume on the planet. Like, okay. But that, that so that, 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 that should that, maybe that, be broken. That but, should be broken up then. Sure. Yeah. I mean, on, I I don't I don't have in front of me a litmus test of when a, a company or a conglomerate should be broken up. I don't have that in front of me. That doesn't sound good when you say mm -hmm. all news on the planet is controlled by six companies. I would mm -hmm. like that to be like 50 companies or something sure, like that. Maybe absolutely. more. I don't know. So, so would I. I. I th that, that, that's fine, but that has nothing to do with CEO pay. Well, this this uh, it has a little bit to do with that. It has to do with the way the CEOs operate, right? Because again, you said the reason that this would happen, that these mergers and acquisitions occur, is because it increases, or in some cases, sure. is better for the shareholder value, and that makes sense, right? I'm I've got my company. Uh, I'm going to make even more money. I don't give a fuck about the employees or the fact that basically now one company is going to control everything. So that doesn't matter okay, to me. Uh, okay. It does create wealth. So doing a mergers and acquisition very interesting. Let me give you a very top line example okay, sure. of how a company can can create free value out of the thin air. So if, let's say I'm a $100 million company. My market cap is worth $100 million. And I want to buy the Surf TV, right? Sure. It's only going to cost me a million dollars because it's just a small Twitch channel. We're just- Oh, you can have it. Okay? That, yeah, yeah. Sold. So, so I go out and instead of offering you cash, I just say, you know what, I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to issue a million dollars in shares. So what I've done is I've created, I'm not giving you shares I have. I've, I've literally create new shares mm -hmm. and I give them to you, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I give that to you and then I put out the news, hey, uh, Dan just bought the surfs, mm -hmm. right? And guess what? The stock goes up 2% or 3%. What have I just done by acquiring you? It is very interesting. Not only have I just uh, only given you a million dollars in equity for your company, but my value of my company has gone up. So Absolutely. you not only were a free company, I have, I've, I'm worth more and I've acquired you after that. Absolutely. That is why acquisitions and mergers are so key 
for larger companies to do. You literally create wealth as people, as the stockholders think this is a great synergy mm -hmm. and this is going to be good. Now, that doesn't always happen. It can go the opposite way. It can mm -hmm. go down. Okay. But that's why mergers and acquisitions aren't going to go away. You create wealth out of thin air by acquiring a company and people think that the, together the two forces are stronger than they are apart. Absolutely. But in your example, you now control me and you can probably say, I don't want to have this discussion with Destiny. I'd rather just watch you eat your own feces, which I mean, I would have to do because I'm now owned by you. And that's kind sure. of the, and that's kind of the problem, right? Is that now? Well, I don't. I don't well, smaller, wait, what, are we, wait, wait, what are we talking about right now? Okay, refocus. What is this conversation about? Uh, he, uh, my understanding of where it's at is that mergers and acquisitions <laughs> are bad. Yeah, that like everything <laughs> is well, that, that things are too monopolistic. What, what is, I don't think it's more about what the end game of all this is, right? Because yeah, like, mergers and acquisitions I'm, constantly are bad. Of course, I don't think anybody disagrees with this, right? Yeah, but well, okay, but this again is it's like none of this is, is stopping or slowing down. If anything, it's accelerating every every single sure, year. So we need to do something to probably stop it. Yeah, sure. Okay. And then, and then but like you, that's and a really strange argument. Wait, but that's a really strange argument to get from somebody who says that like I'm guessing you say that the government should be the sole provider of housing or the government should be the sole provider of healthcare. Like it seems like in that case you don't mind like a monopolistic force, but well, governments and companies are two separate things. Governments are owned by the people. They're run by the people. Good companies are not. As of now, these I mean, they're publicly not... traded, but I guess you could argue that like it's obviously people that have capital control. But do you, you have okay. no voting power in these companies? That's neat. Yeah, no, because I don't have the capital control. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. You just making sure. Okay. But this has nothing to do with the CEO pay. And I mean, we can still argue against Monopoly, sure. No. Well, I mean, it does in a way because at the end of the day, CEOs want to make more money. They want to increase their shareholder value. So part of their payment is probably if you have the opportunity to grow your company to where it is, you know, valuable enough to become mergered. Sorry, is that a verb? Can you say that? Can you be mergered? <laughs> I don't to know. Get, to, get a, to get acquired. Yeah, to be acquired. Right? Yeah. In a case like this. Wait, but I, I I don't see the problem with that. Yes, a CEO should be maximizing. Wait, the... no, no, no. Wait, focus on the merger thing. Everybody here agrees that like having like three companies controlling everything in the industry is probably not good for anybody. Yes, I, I, I've said we that all agree actually. on that, right? Yeah, but I don't want but... to prevent smaller companies from doing mergers and acquisitions. I just don't think there should be like six companies controlling all media on Earth. Sure, for sure. Yes, but do, do, do you not see that? Do you not see that under that under the system that we have now that this has kind of been the inevitable end game? This is this is where it was. No, headed. I don't agree that if that's the case, then any form of socialism, your inevitable end game is some authoritarian regime. We're not we're not comparing economic systems right now. We're still talking about CEO pay. Like this this is what. Yeah, but the, like it's not fair to say that like this bad outcome is inevitable. Like, well, it, but I can it seems to be the only outcome. It's happening in every single industry. Like like I said, okay, I the reason, and most of the places where socialism has been tried, the inevitable outcome of that is. Been authoritarian regimes that fucking genocide people. Like that's not a fair argument, right? We okay. exist in this society right now. We can regulate sure. companies right now. So what we could say is like, okay, well, let's advocate for some form of regulating companies that maybe like Disney shouldn't be able to buy fucking Marvel Studios Everything. or whatever, yeah. or that like, yeah, that like this is something that shouldn't happen, right? That these people mm -hmm. have a disproportionate amount of power, and that we should discourage people that, that form these type of monopolistic entities. I think right. that's something that everybody can agree on. J just saying, that, like, as, well, as well as as well yeah. as we agree that it's actually built into the system. Eventually, to head down this road, right? Why because, is it built into the system? Because the more money. You make and the more value you're worth eventually you become available for a merger and acquisition and it bears out in in what has happened with every single one of these companies that's the reason that it ends up this sure. way it's, it's not happening but that's what randomly. government regulation is for we're not nobody here is saying that like our end game needs to be with unfettered capitalism nobody's saying that no one is saying that our end game needs to be unfettered capitalism like nobody's saying that like we need to have capitalism with zero government regulation right, or restriction right, right, right. at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the end game of capitalism is also polluting the fuck out of everything and destroying the environment and murdering like opponent business execs if there were like no laws or anything, of course. But like we can talk about like prescriptive laws that we would want that would prevent these types of mergers from happening, of course. And Dan, you you want prescriptive laws that'll prevent or break up these mergers? Uh, of course, absolutely, to a certain extent. I don't think we should limit it for smaller companies. But yes, as I've said, I think that, I mean, I just said before this that Google should be broken up. I mm -hmm. think that to a certain extent, Amazon should be. Amazon's destroying smaller businesses. Um, yeah, absolutely, that should be the case. Uh, yeah, you're not going to catch me disagreeing on that. And also, I think there should be higher environmental regulations on these companies as well. Like, that doesn't... I sure, we agree on that. So we all agree on that, that this yeah. is bad. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know where where else we really want to go here. I think um, 
I think in the grand scheme of things, I think CEO compensation is almost like irrelevant when we're talking about like getting average pay for like employees. I don't see how CEO compensation has anything to do with like what an average employee makes. I think if we want to champion average employees, we do things like we strengthen unions, we talk about minimum wage increases, or we find other ways to give workers like representation or, or more pay, whether that's taxes or whatever. Like I think those are way better ways to return money to workers than just reducing the CEO. Like re saying that reducing CEO pay is going to make workers make more, that's literally trickle down economics arguments from Republicans. Like that's not how any of that works. I don't think. Uh, I never said reducing CEO pay is going to make the workers get paid more. I mean, it would only be in the scenario if you actually stole their money and then handed it back. Like you. Literally... Wait, then why do we care about CEO pay at all? Why do we care about CEO pay? Because the way it's structured, fundamentally from the ground up, the way corporations work right now is, is in my opinion, because uh, you, I don't think you share this, the amount of money that the CEO is making in relation to the amount the employee is making is A, not sustainable, and B, it's, it's not morally right. Wait, then why are we talking about CEO pay at all? Why don't we just talk about the structure of companies? Well, we talked about a lot of things. Wait, but no, like you literally have no opinions whatsoever then over the over the pay of, of <laughs> you CEOs. You always say that. I give you so many opinions, Destiny, and then you just call me like. A well, wait, but you're literally saying. Coward. But you just said it. No, no, no. <laughs> but you just said like at the end of the day, I don't give a fuck about like whatever this. Like I think that we should just like abandon this model of corporation like all together. Why not just open with that instead of? I, I never said that. You actually, like, you were the king of what about isms on me. Okay, <laughs> why do we care about C? Why do you care about CEO pay? I care about CEO pay because I think yeah. it is grossly, uh, it's, it's not ameliorate with the amount that the employees make, first off, right? And I don't think it's reflective of what they do. I do not think the jobs that the performance of the CEO is reflective in the amount that the CEO makes from that company as well. But it has nothing to do with like how much employees make or anything. It's just, you just, think I, I, I think that from a moral aspect, right? But yes, okay. I agree with you, of course. So yeah, your only I, problem with CEO pay is that you just think they get paid too much for the amount of work they do. No, that's 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 one of the things we've we've been talking for an hour and forty minutes, man. Well, yeah, but then you keep saying these weird things like, "Oh, well, I actually think that the entire structure of a corporation is just bad." So I was like, "Oh, well, then why?" I, I, I was, you're being so reductionist. Like, what? what is well, but no, no, but conversations I, like over and over, man. It's weird. Why talk about CEO pay at all? Then why not just say like corporations are bullshit? Like they need to go. Like it, the structure is just not good. The structure is just not good. Yeah, like, just fuck the whole structure. Why Why focus on, like, CEO pay? Why not just say, like, CEOs are bullshit, period? CEOs are bullshit, period. I told you that in my example, which I gave you earlier, right, which was Matagron, there are CEOs. And I just don't think that a CEO should be having to make so much more than their employees make. Both, I, I think it's been proven there's an economic system, like, there's a model that in which inside capitalism that this works. So if it works, why do we have to have this incredible? Well, it does, it's not really... That's not okay. really true, though. It's proven that it works. What do you mean? It, their, their net uh, worth, I think, was estimated at like $20 billion. If I were to take every single wealthy company in the world sure. in the top 500 list, and one of them is a co-op, you think that's like a strong example that co-ops are incredibly effective ways of managing business? I don't think that's fair to say. We, now, we can say there might be some merits to running a co-op, but to present it like this is a strong alternative to like a privately funded company is a, a little it's, bit of it's a It's the fifth threat. largest company in Spain. And and yes, it's it's kind of like it, li it lives in a vacuum because there's not a lot of other examples like this, but it's the one that I'm pointing towards because it is demonstrable that it does work. Sure, it can it, work. Yeah. yeah, the fifth largest company in Spain is sure. a, is a federation of co-ops. That's good, but that's not like strong evidence that like all privately funded businesses are structured inefficiently or that everything should move towards co-ops. Well, like, it's some, some something closer like to that. And, uh, I I know, but I'm at a disadvantage here, man, because like at the end of the day, there's obviously way less examples of worker cooperatives than there is like you know major corporations. But as I've said, the studies do bear out that they have the same uh, rate of decay. They just don't have the same rate of birth as those companies. So that would indicate to me as well that they are effective on a larger scale for other industries as well. well how, would that, how is it indica indicative that they're effective? Well, because they don't die out the same way. Like when you, you when you start up small businesses, there's tons of small businesses that fail all the time, right? Like that's okay. that's just what happens. Yeah. Okay. And if and if they succeed, that would be an example of them succeeding, right? Under under capitalism, we would have we would have to look into that a lot more, though, right? We would absolutely if, yes. Yeah, it's, it's a very, agree, it's a very instance, broad statement. Sure, it's harder to start a co-op than it is to start a privately founded thing because to start a co-op, every single person needs to bring some amount of money to the table. Yes, right. Yes, so there, we might already, yeah, we might already be selecting for more successful business models just based on the fact that every single person coming to it is more wealthy than than people that would normally start these otherwise. Sure, right. So, like, I'm not saying that that's the case. I'm just saying that, like, just looking at like the rate of decay of businesses isn't enough to say, well, look, there's the statistical data. This is my reels over feels that this is the statistics that co-ops are really good. Like, I, that's not a very strong statement. To make 
expect I, what that it's, it's demonstrably that it works uh, how is that you demonstrate all, all, I, I've, you given you, I've given you one large example and i've told you as an aggregate as an average so firstly your one large example by definition ironically sure. enough is an anecdote this is one example that works it's true but it's one example in a sea of privately founded firms sure. privately funded firms one sure. and then two rate of decay yeah. It is not evidence of like successful business models. For instance, if I were to tell you the rate of decay. No, rate, rate of death, case, not, not decay. As, as in the company. Death. Yeah. If I were to give you the rate of death of a company that's founded by like white people versus black people, my guess in the United States is the white ones are going to be more successful. But I wouldn't say that it's just because white people run businesses better or black versus black people. I would say there's probably these are probably proxies for other things like socioeconomic conditions, right? We could say the same thing with with the rate of startups for like co-ops versus like privately funded things. That a co-op is probably going to be started by pretty wealthy people if everybody can bring money into that co-op. So you're probably already selecting for a group of people that have higher education, higher socioeconomic status and and more ability to run a business. Well, I mean, you can't tell me that a lot of private corporations aren't started by incredibly rich individuals. It's like there's a Yeah, but stupid people, people 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 stupid people can start it too. Because you're using other people's money. That's the whole point of a privately funded thing, right? Is that you right. can take investments from other people. Right. You and can't you know do what? that with I, I, I will grant you one thing, man. Like, I don't have enough statistics or even understanding of these companies outside of the fact that, yes, I've read numerous times that they have the same rate of birth. Uh, sorry, the same rate of death and not the same rate of birth. So, yeah, you're, you're right. There's probably going to be a lot more nuance involved. In yeah, and I would exactly encourage you this. Because, like, people in your chat are literally saying, like, that time when private companies are started by poor people. Yes, that's possible. You can start private companies as a poor person. That's the whole point. Like, it's funny that people are laughing at that, but that is literally the entire entire point of capital markets is so that people can start companies that can't afford to do it. You can't do that with a co-op. Only wealthy people can start co-ops. It's a big problem that people in Sweden face when it comes to buying into some of these apartment complexes is that you can't just pay rent to somebody. You have to literally take out a fucking loan to get the capital to buy into the co-op. Yes, the whole point of capital markets is so that poor people or people without the liquidity to start a business can do it. I, like, it's, I don't know why you would laugh at that when that's literally the entire purpose of capital markets. Like, what the fuck? Um, well, sorry, yeah. Because it probably doesn't happen very frequently. I don't hear a lot of stories of poor people having companies, you know, funding every for them, single right? time a guy gets a loan for a business, that's a poor person that doesn't have the prerequisite liquidity to start a business. Every Absol single time. Absolutely. And if we look at the actual, like, you know, the overall statistics on how exactly do successful individuals and successful companies come about, overwhelmingly, it happens to do with either inher inherited wealth or, uh, you know, sometimes it's even luck. Yeah, I don't deny that at all, of course. Yeah. I'm just saying that the whole point of private funding is that a person without the prerequisite liquidity can start a company because somebody else will take an equity ownership stake of that company and fund it for them. Of course. That's the whole point of private funding. So it, it's just it's ironic to laugh and say, ha ha, poor people privately funding companies. A poor person sure as fuck isn't joining a co-op anytime soon. Co-ops are exclusively for wealthy people. Poor people can't afford to join co-ops. That's the whole that's one of the biggest criticisms against them. Like sorry, okay. No, that's okay. Um <laughs> Dan, how you doing? <laughs> Uh, listen, this is capitalism here. Next time you want to debate me, uh, I brought Destiny this time. I'll bring another one differently, okay? So this is, I have the multiverse for me, all right? And I have, I have paid them the exact amount I needed to pay them to bring them and do an effective job. That's why I get paid the big bucks, all right? Anyways, continue. Sure. Well, I mean, the, the same things could be said about it, like the mediums that we're doing this on right now, right? Like, uh, I'm only speaking to you, right, through the grace of the fact that these mass-produced cheap electronics are available to, to me through capitalism. That's how we're all having a conversation right now, right? And then we just got the cognitive dissidence at the other end that it comes at the hands of immense human suffering because people in Foxconn to be able to build all these electronics, you know, they want to commit suicide, so they have to jump out of the walls, but there's nets to catch them, all that kind of stuff. But again, that's capitalism, right? Like, that's, yeah, sure. Uh, sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, I, I, I think we've hit an impasse for now, gents. Why don't... Uh, what well, I guess my, my main thing that I'm kind of curious, I know we sure. kind of danced yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit. I just don't know why you care about CEO pay. Like, why is that a thing? It, and you said it was just because you felt like they were overcompensated for the amount of work they do? Or I think I repeated that and then you... No, no, no. I, I told you once... I, sorry, sorry. I, I, I told you... I'm not trying to sound condescending there. I, I told you before that, like, I, I think it's egregious how much more and how much it's expanded and the rate of expansion. And I do not think that it's commensurate with the work that they do. I think that's a huge and when you problem. Say, and I think sure. that it, it also creates a big discrepancy between what a worker does and what a CEO does. Because as we established before, to be able to be a CEO, you have to have been born in... It's it's luck, right? You have to have basically won yeah, yeah, the birth lottery. Yeah, that's a totally different... Yeah, of course. You stickiness at the ends of, of any economic system. Abs course, absolutely. So, yeah. But like, so, so, the question is, like, what is an egregious CEO compensation? What do you mean by that? Making making what? Do I have to look at the numbers? Like, what is it? The guy from JCPenney made something like a billion dollars? How much should he make? 
You keep, you keep asking me that. I, I don't have uh, an exact answer. Well, but like, I, I've, to, I've told you I would like to cap it probably at like about you, 5 you, to 1 you, to 10 to 1 of an employee. Okay. okay that's, that's, that's the best answer I can give you there. So you seem to think that they make too much money, that it's egregious. Sure. I'm not asking you for an exact amount. I'm just curious, like, why is it too much? Like, what would you expect it to be? And then, so you're saying that it should be pegged on an employee's compensation. But I'm, we agree I'm saying, that, like... I'm, I'm saying that model makes more sense to me. I, if, it, if, it if it can be proven to be still capable of running the company in the same way. But it way. would make sense to you that the CEO of a company that has over 20,000 employees should make 200,000 a year. That makes sense to you. Sure, why not? Well, can I can I ask, would you be worried at all with the company, say Amazon, they're looking for yeah. another CEO. Or would you be worried that because they can only offer such a small amount of money that they might get someone who could make a fundamental mistake and cost hundreds of thousands of people their job? Well, I mean, the first problem being, like I showed you in the statistics, as it bears out, people who get paid more work worse in the CEO okay, in, but, as but CEOs. We've also, we and, also and we've also established that small amount. That's not like going from two hundred thousand to a hundred million. That's right, like of course. You, yeah, I know you're, we're making extreme jumps here, but at the same time, we've also found out that CEOs don't actually hire that way, right? The, sorry, companies don't hire boards of directors. Do not hire CEOs in that fashion. Typically, it's it's not like uh, they're in, they're looking for uh, the marketplace of CEOs. Is, is the other problem there. His CEOs are oftentimes hired internally, which... Not I, sure, that, that, that's uh, fine. But so, I mean, you're responsible for tremendous amount of... of you just have so much responsibility here. And to mm -hmm. just... I, I, I don't know. I feel like you're not going to get the best candidate from that job if you're not able to be competitive, right? That's a whole... You're, all the competitiveness is gone. Why right. would... You know, what, how do you account for that in your system? Well, in my system, if, if, if you're asking, again, using my example, right, we wouldn't have a kind of a bottom up system in which there was a small amount of people making decisions for everyone for the entire company. We would have more of a worker controlled and worker voting system where every single employee would have a vote in the future of the company. Do you think that that's a good way to run a company where every employee can kind of dictate it? Because don't you think that the the goals of the employees of the company are not going to be like, hey, let's make a substantial bet on doing this. And instead, let's, hey, let's double our pay. Do you think that that's likely to happen? Uh, well, I mean, in the examples that we have already, it doesn't. So... I, I, don't, Wait, I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think that there's just going to suddenly be a board. Like I guess a, a vote, a union vote, where they're suddenly like, let's all triple our pay, and the company tanks the next day. I think those people, yeah, in the interest of self-preservation, like I think your example, you're trying to point out towards me, uh, they would still say, let's have a job tomorrow rather than let's tank our entire company. But so, oh, so that's a, that's a good one then. So for instance, sure. they would never be in favor of job cuts to save a company. Uh, they would probably eventually be in favor of job cuts at a certain point, but they seem to have less rates of, uh, like, for example, in Spain, Spain went through a uh, terrible uh, recession after the economic depression. They had something like 50% youth unemployment rates, and yet one of the companies in which uh, people were not getting laid off en masse was Madrigon, right? Because they had better worker protection. I mean, it's so hard to use Mondragon as an example for anything because it's such a one-off outlier. Like, I know, we would need but to have like, I know, more. but like, uh, you know, dude, I'm, <laughs> I, I don't have a hundred other big, huge scale uh, corporations to be able to like, you know, point the finger at and see how do they work. I, I there, there happens to be a very, very large one, and that's the one that is often used to cite these things. Okay, but that that would be that would be a better a better work scenario to me than the one in which the CEO controls so much of the decision making as well as so much of the wealth. Like an incredible amount of, of wealth hoarding. Do you think that this would hurt companies that uh, had non-skilled employees? Like, so for instance, mm -hmm. uh, someone like Walmart, mm -hmm. right, would have a lowest paid employee and someone being like, what, minimum wage, essentially, someone who's out there doing a greeter. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you would have tech companies, right, who would have the lowest paid employee possibly being someone making $250,000 a year. So as a result of this, would you not have further class divides as people who were unable to be into more effective positions were completely outpaid and had worse representation as CEOs because those CEOs could not get paid nearly what they could if they went to a more lucrative industry. And as such, you would have a higher class divide of people who are doing like manual labor work, meaning a worse CEO at the top, worse managers at the top at every step of the way, because there's not as much money in that, as opposed to being a manager or CEO in something high paid like a tech job, tech firm. But in, I guess in your example, though, if they had the ability to vote, I would still say that they had slightly more power than they had in the other situation, right? So even if you're like a, a, a janitor or whatever the example was that you used, right? you would still have slightly more control within the company. And I would, I would like, ideally to me, I would hope that the company would have some kind of a, a worker training program or some kind of advancement programs. Like they would include those. I mean, I think those are things that people would want to vote for within their own self-interest as well. 
I mean, possibly, but how much voting in your own self-interest can you do when <laughs> I guess you're in a manual labor type of field? There's not a lot of upward momentum that you can have in that case versus other industries that have, you know, mm -hmm. uh, higher, higher uh, rate of return, essentially, on your salary right. and what you can get. Yeah. You're also asking a bigger question, though, right? Because, like, uh, again, we were saying, why do people get into these specific industries? Like, why are they going to work as, uh, say, laborers in the first place instead of being CEOs? Like, why isn't everyone a CEO? Why isn't everyone a doctor? Like, that would be, it seems like it makes the most sense for people to do that. But unfortunately, there is an upward mobility in the society we have, right? People are, are often born into the positions they get. It's kind of a birth lottery. To a certain extent, yes, I, I, I can agree with that. Absolutely. Um, you know, and it's, it's not necessarily fair, but I don't know if we can get to a fair society. I don't know if that's practical or reality. We can still make steps towards a fair society. Though. No, no, no. And I, I agree that. But I, I think that's way too far off on the spectrum of things that we can get into practice. And as I've said before, like I'm, I'm in favor of things that are more fair, things like, you know, having monopoly restriction being more aggressive than it is now, having environmental restriction being more aggressive than it is now. Um, I just I don't think that um, a lot of the things you're saying are, are practical or possible to be put into into practice, even in smaller uh, steps. Well, I was going to say, you probably don't think it's possible in wide scale implementation, right? Because like... I, I, yeah, I would say sure. Yeah, okay. I don't think it's possible wide scale. I mean, sure, it can. I mean, you have co-ops like, you know, there's there's small co-ops all over all over the place. It's just they typically are not successful, right? You have like a few examples of ones that are apparently the best of the best of the best, as lucky and as good, as, as skilled as the people as they can, co-ops, and then you have like four of those who made it. So the vast amount of co-ops are not able to be players, right? So if all things are equal and co-ops run just as effectively as um, capitalists, or not capitalists, but you know, typical companies and things like that, I guess we should see more of them, but we don't because the incentives are not there for it, correct? Yes. Like people don't. Yes, absolutely. The yeah. incentives aren't there for them to start up. So what would you do to have there be incentives for them to start being created? Vote for Bernie Sanders. Do you think Bernie Sanders has control over this? <laughs> Sorry, that was just yeah. being flippant. Uh, okay, oh. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think that's a long question, right? Like you're you're basically saying how do how do we ameliorate a lot of the things in society in terms of actually developing and starting companies? Like I I respectfully need to get back to you on that to give you kind of yeah, a, no. I mean, it's a, an important question. Like yeah. if no one wants to create a startup or not a startup, but if no one wants to create a co-op, like mm -hmm. that, this is kind of dead in the water, right? Like people when you're going to create a company. You're not thinking, how can I help my father, ma uh, fellow man? You're thinking, how can I help myself? And, and I, I, I think well. for starters, for I think for starters, if there was messaging, especially the proper messaging, I mean, it's one of the things that I try to do where I tell you, I mean, you, Dan, you love freedom, right? Like you're all about yeah. freedom and the same freedoms that you have in your, in your democracy to vote for your leaders and your government. Wouldn't you like to have those same freedoms in work? And I know you do because you happen to be a boss, but the majority of people don't. So why don't we sure. give them that ability? Because then whether or not they make good decisions with it, they still have have that freedom it's the same thing with voting i think whether or not people voted for donald trump and uh, that sucks that they did they should still have the ability to do so and i don't see why we don't extend that to the workplace so do you do you respect the rule of, of majority then across the board if people vote for that well i or mean no? I, I i i do respect for yeah I, I respect democracy if that's what you're asking even if it goes against your personal views well that's what happened with donald trump I mean, I'm, okay. not, I'm, so, I'm, not, I'm not an American, but I mean, I still have to live with the results of that. And yeah, that, I'm, I'm sure. not, not going to say let's get rid of democracy now. I'm no, not gonna, no, I, I agree. But we're at, yeah. we're at an impasse because the, it seems like the vast majority of people don't want uh, this type of system being put in place and it's actively pushed against, correct? Which one? Democracy? Uh, like, you know, like a, like a socialist uh, co-op type, you know, universe that we're, we're talking about here. I would say that most people... Uh, well, that's why I said the messaging is important. I, I prob I, I'm guessing they probably don't think about it in the same way, or they probably don't know about it in the same way. I'm, I'm trying to, I, if I was giving a sales pitch, that's how I would pitch it to people, right? Like you're, you're basically extending democracy, removing democracy from not only from your poli from politics into the workplace. I think that's a fair thing. I mean, I'm, I'm, you're, you're not talking, to, I'm not an anarchist. I'm not, I'm not a communist, right? I'm, sure. I, I'm, I'm basically trying to like, I would like to see an evolution of capitalism. I think we can move beyond it the same way that we moved from alchemy to chemistry, you know, the same way we moved from like astrology to astronomy. Um, you can see the same thing done. You can see a better system that is going to be more um, egalitarian for everybody. I, I think most people don't want that. I mean, I can point to a certain example here. I've said this before because I, I know someone, uh, I think it was in one of your chats, said that like, hey, everyone wants Medicare for all. Sure. That's not true. Most people... Uh, people who are middle class and above don't. And I can point to a very simple reason for you on this is that if you're a wealthy person, mm -hmm. you like going to the DMV. 
The answer is no. You don't mm-hmm. want that level of service where, you know, if, if you're wealthy or if you're middle class, you want to feel like you can have some influence over, over that type of thing. You don't want to be treated like a DMV type experience. People are afraid of losing that type of, uh, of control that they have. They point to things like the VA and the failures of the VA and things like that moving forward. I mean, this is a real fear. But that, 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 that was the same argument made by the kings uh, under feudalism, because they were saying basically sure. they were saying to the serfs, right? They were basically like, hey, I, by I, the way, I, I, you, you I'm don't want to be bothered with the with the I'm idea. I'm not arguing in favor for or against it. I'm just saying I this know, is a but, common view. People but that, don't that, want their health that would be the same argument. DMV experience. I mean, I mean, that would be okay, the same sure. argument. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Same. Saying that people don't that don't want it or won't understand it or won't know how to how to work with it. I mean, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Do you think that uh, what what? Okay, listen, right? I love you guys. You're doing great work. Okay, I gotta do the interview now. Okay, I love you. Keep it a great, <laughs> okay. keep it a great discussion. Bye. Bye, doesn't. Did you enjoy what you just watched and now crave more nectar of the damned? Did you know that if you're watching on YouTube, you're only getting half the surfy experience? We upload all of our content commercial and censorship free to our Patreon. Due to the general demonetization of our videos, we now upload half of our original content directly to those who can help us produce this show. Want even more nectar than that? Well, come join us at twitch.tv slash thesurfstv, where we do weekly live streams, debates, interviews, AMAs, and more. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you can help support our show 100% free by subscribing to our Twitch channel. So come join us, be merry, and know that your support is helping us do great things. I pay rent and eat. Hearing that a guy talked to a burning bush doesn't prove anything other than that he might be crazy or took some really great magic mushrooms. We would first and foremost like to thank our god, Nicholas Marx, we worship at your temple. We would like to thank our monarch, Elsie Hupp. Your generosity has made this entire thing possible. We would like to thank our lords, Ricky Pilgrim, I'm Raft, and Michaela Schmidt. You are the pillars of our organization. To our knights of the surf table, Paul Parfit, Daniel Kahn, Fair Tahan, Clement Chutzkoff, Schizosaurus, Josh Mickelson, Dr. Zayas, Cooper Pilot, Andre Lynn Epperly, Dylan Bith, Terry, Todd Buckingham, Jed Lewis, Todd Lajeunesse.